back to WrestleMania for a minute. Eight matches on each night. That's what they're talking about, at least. And we have nine with the ones that I went over. We need seven more of them. Again, I think one of those matches is going to be Rey Mysterio Jr. against Santos Escobar. I mean, it could be a mixed-person match. You could do that so you could get Legato and LWO on the show as well, too. We'll see. I would kind of rather see a one-on-one match. I, th- I think it's going to be AOP and Karrion Cross with Scarlett against the, the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley with BFAB. I just don't want to see this feud continue anymore. I'd like to see the Street Profits do something. I'd like to see Bobby Lashley do something that is not over with those three. It's just... The AOP and carrying Cross is not an act that has worked for me so far. Cross and Scarlet did not work for me before in the first run around. The AOP I was kind of okay with, but right, again, right now everybody is just treading water for the time being. To me, that is the best match you can have. And again, it takes another one off the ledger. WWE Women's Tag Team Title Match. I... I wonder how this is going to go. Look, Kyrie Sane and Asuka. Asuka is hurt right now or was banged up with her knee. Uh, so, But it is possible that if Asuka is going to miss the match or needs to be out, that Dakota Kai can fill in that spot. The way the angle has been going, Naomi came out, made the save for Bailey. Naomi and Bianca have kind of been into it because Naomi hadn't been here. She had been over in TNA. Bianca told her, you don't know what bailey has been doing. You don't know how she went after her. Because there is no clear path right now for a Bianca match, Is will it be Naomi and Bianca that face off against Kairi Sane and Asuka for the tag titles? That could make some sense. Then from there, for the other three matches, or the other four matches, Nia Jax and Jade Cargill? I know on paper that doesn't sound good, and it certainly wouldn't go long, but you could do some sort of multi-person match because you have so many women, the Liv Morgans and Caden and Katana and Natalia and on and on, Tiffany Stratton, where they have not had anything announced for them, and it doesn't look like there's any angles or or stories that are really leading into anything. They're the one story of Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae, uh, against Maxine and, and Ivy Nile. It just doesn't, doesn't seem to me, feel to me like it's a WrestleMania match that they would bother with. I could be dead wrong about that, but I have a feeling we're going to see a multiple war, multiple woman match that we'll see Nia Jax and Jade Cargill probably face off at the end. And then from there, you got three more matches where Chad Gable, you know, he's been involved in the story with Sami Zayn, telling Sammy he can't win. He's been disappointed. Will we have something with Chad Gable? Otis and Tazawa aren't doing anything. I guess you could put them in some sort of match, but I have a feeling if it's Chad Gable, look, and I don't know if Brock Lesnar is coming back. I would not advise WWE to have Brock Lesnar come back. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. But if you are going to bring him back, as I said, I think it was a couple of days ago on the show, That would be a match for Chad Gable to have as long as Chad Gable can go ahead and go over that way. Speaking of of, of legends, if you consider Brock Lesnar one, uh, there's going to be a couple of others involved with WrestleMania 40. This was posted up to the front page of the site by Josh Nason earlier on today. In the newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reports that the belief right now is that Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, and John Cena will be appearing at the event in some form. Dave wrote that nothing is official, but the belief right now is that Austin, Undertaker, and Cena will have something at WrestleMania. At press time, there is no creative locked in for Cena and Austin at this moment. Or if there is, it is a well-guarded secret. A lot depends on how much they are willing to do and money. Because... It always comes down to money. So so basically cash and creative is what this all comes down to. Cena is free, but depending on what acting stuff he has, that will determine how much he can or cannot do for insurance reasons. For insurance reasons, Austin and Undertaker would be based on the willingness that they have. 
Cena has repeatedly teased appearing at this year's WrestleMania during recent media appearances that he has done. He wrestled in a match last year at WrestleMania 39, losing in the first match of night one to Austin Theory, uh, going after Theory's United States title. Austin has not appeared at a WrestleMania since Kevin Owens in that match at WrestleMania 38, which was the same WrestleMania where The Undertaker was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. So all three of those men look like they will have some sort of presence on the show. WWE Today, for all of those of you who are going to Philadelphia, they have announced their pop-up store location. According to a press release, the store will be located at the Philadelphia Convention Center in Hall B. That's in Center City, Philadelphia, about 15 minutes or so north of the stadiums. It's where WWE is setting up all of its WWE World deal that is now replaced WrestleMania Access. The store is going to be open from Thursday, April 4th through Monday, April 8th. They also announced today, taking place at that event, that the Slammies will be making their return on Sunday, April 7th. It will be a live broadcast of the show. It is going to be hosted by Big E and Kathy Kelly and will stream on WWE's YouTube channel and other social media platforms. I would assume if this is going to be live on Sunday, it is going to be the pre-pre-show, unless it's going to be uh, hemmed into the, the pre-show at some point and weaved in there at some point, uh, is going to take place. And it, the last time it has taken place was in, in 2020. Uh, the awards for an old guy like me, you know, kind of sort of meant something way back in the in the day. They had the, the the one from Baltimore, I believe it was, and then they did one from Atlantic City. I think the second one they called the 37th Annual Slammy Awards, was produced by Kayfabe, that ended with everybody on stage singing, If You Only Knew What I Was Going To Do To You. I have got to get that into the mix here as far as some of the music that we play going in and out of segments. Uh, the categories and the nominees for the Slammy Awards have not been revealed yet. WWE notes that fan voting will be open soon. And the official name of the award show is the 2024 Slammys, the Fans' Choice Awards. So take that, Nickelodeon. It's now WWE's time to take the fans' choices. 1950 pop culture quiz. The blank moved from New York to San Francisco in Giants. 1957. Holy sh... <laughs> a sports question? A sports ball question. Brian got it right. Do you know what sport? Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> the blank corporation introduced jute boxes that could play 45 MP. RCA. Wait a minute. i got to see if I have the answer. Hound a dog. <laughs> no, that's the wrong question. Hound dog? It's an Elvis Presley song. Five. <laughs> Thank God we did this. Well, what's the answer? What was the question? <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.